Hi, everyone. If you're new to podcasting or interested in starting a new podcast, let me tell you a little bit about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And when hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So for the brand new podcaster, that is a plus. So check it out. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm, that's F as in Frank, M as in Mary, to get started. Welcome everyone, season's greetings, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, and Merry Christmas to everyone. Today I'm going to do a story I wrote a bit ago, titled The Legend of Christmas and the First Flying Reindeer. I hope you all enjoy it. Here we go. The Legend of Christmas and the First Flying Reindeer. The story of Christmas and the flying reindeer is one of old. Many do not know the incredible tale of where the real legend actually began. This isn't just any story. It's a story of such power and magnificence that God himself had a hand in the creation and it would last through generations to come. The story began on the night of the birth of our Lord Jesus Jesus was born in a stable where cows, donkeys, horses, and lambs were kept, and he was placed in a manger filled with hay. All the animals, Jesus' mother Mary, his father Joseph, and a little drummer boy who had found his way to the stable following the star had circled around the manger. Out from the cold darkness, three wise men entered the stable. Each came bearing a gift for the new king. The gifts were gold, incense called frankincense, which was burned during prayer, and a sacred resin called myrrh. The three wise men, also known as magi, were men that studied the stars. A bright star had shone in the heavens, which signaled the birth of the new king and led the magi to the place of his birth. These three magi were sent on a quest for an evil king named Herod. King Herod believed the presence of this star marked the birth of the one true king, and Herod would be king no more. He was foretold of this by one of his fortune tellers, so he ordered the wise men to find the new baby and to tell him its whereabouts, tricking the magi by telling them that he only wanted to pay his respects and worship him too. King Herod was so afraid to lose his power as king to this newborn child one day that he planned to order the most evil act to have all male children two years and under in Bethlehem killed. The first night the Magi stopped to take their rest from their travels They each fell into a deep sleep where they all had the same dream. An angel of God had appeared to each magi in the dream and warned them of King Herod's order to kill the young children of Bethlehem to ensure the baby king would be destroyed and never come to power and threaten his throne. Herod's wickedness was so evil, he had even had two of his own sons and family members killed during his reign to make sure he would remain king. The dream the three magi had had revealed to them the pure evil of King Herod's heart. The baby born this night to be called Jesus would one day be an entirely different kind of king. The angel showed visions of Jesus, not as a king to sit on an earthly throne like Herod, but a king to all of man through God, to save the world from evil and the sin mankind had fallen into. 
No earthly throne would be that for Jesus to take rest upon. His was to be the throne of heaven. Jesus had an enormous mission to fulfill. He was sent for the salvation for all men and women. The Magi were thought to be sorcerers, but not necessarily bad ones. Magi were men that studied how the stars moved in the night sky and how herbs and ointments could help heal the sick. Some had the gifts of seeing the future. Magi were simply gifted with abilities the Lord had bestowed on them that very few men possessed, and they loved and served the Lord nonetheless. And they would do whatever they could to help protect their newly born king. Time was short, the Magi feared. Upon greeting Mary and Joseph, they explained about the angel appearing to them in a dream the three of them each had had, telling of King Herod's order and having to leave Bethlehem immediately in order to save Jesus' life. Mary and Joseph were cold and very tired. Mary had just given birth. The camels needed rest, and they really didn't know what to do or where to go to escape King Herod's wicked orders. Joseph and Mary expressed their concerns, so they all joined hands and prayed. God had heard their heartfelt prayers and felt their weariness. The Lord would help to protect that part of him that was to become our world savior, his son, Jesus. The Lord chose the eldest magi of the three who went by the name of Kringle. Kringle was an extremely kind-hearted man so naturally filled with the warmth of love that his cheeks were always pink and he had a laugh that could only be referred to as contagious. He made all around him smile when he broke out with his jolly laughter. He also had a natural love for children especially. The Lord leaned down and whispered a gift into the ear of Kringle, a whisper of power that would transform Kringle's life for the rest of time. The gift God bestowed was a special power that none other possessed and the knowledge and ability to devise a plan that would protect the baby Jesus and his family. Kringle didn't understand what had happened, how he had been transformed after the Lord's whisper. He was suddenly overwhelmed with the incredible insight and knew what needed to be done to help. Kringle looked around the stable and noticed that he and his two magi companions weren't the only ones drawn to the stable for the birth of Jesus. Many wild animals came out of the snow and calmly circled the manger, which was completely out of character for wild animals to do. And Kringle's gift he was given by God now allowed him and the animals to understand each other. An incredible team was about to be formed and a friendship forged for all of time. Among the wild animals were reindeer, rabbits, and bear. Kringle's soft smile and warm eyes scanned the room, and everyone looked at him because his curly hair and long beard had turned white as pure snow from feeling the very breath of God in his ear. Kringle reassured Mary and Joseph that all would be well, and not to worry, for God had provided, provided these magnificent creatures, and a powerful gift had been given. Then Kringle uttered the words to the reindeer that would forever change history. I give you the gift of flight for the protection of this family and child king who is the very son of God. A whirling motion erupted in the snow all around them like a tornado and swirled intensely around the wild animals. Not only were the reindeer transformed, but so did all the animals present. As Kringle was transforming the reindeer, God had added a special touch to the surrounding creatures as well, transforming them all into helpers. The snow settled back to the ground, and the animals had changed. The reindeer doubled in size with huge racks, thick brown coats, and regal stances. 
The other two magi looked amazed to see some of the reindeer hovered a foot off the ground and the rabbits had been transformed into little tiny people with large ears in green tunics and caps. The bear were immense with thick white coats and enormous paws. Protection would not be a problem from these great beasts. They all could communicate with Kringle as well as one another and stood at attention with eager anticipation for how to help this family that needed their protection. Kringle had the ability to receive messages from the Lord, who showed him the idea of a sleigh. Kringle then directed the little elfin helpers to build a quick, makeshift sleigh from wood and tools in the stable. The bear were directed to guard the stables outside, and when the sleigh was completed, Kringle instructed the reindeer to prepare to be harnessed up to it. Kringle, Kringle's smile widened when he looked at the unusual ears of the elfin helpers because they were rabbits a few moments ago. The sleigh was ready to safely get Joseph, Mary, and Jesus away from Bethlehem and the evils of King Herod. The sleigh easily fit Magi Kringle, Father Joseph, Mother Mary, and baby Jesus. Kringle said his goodbyes to the other two Magi, who had planned to travel on their camels far away from Herod's lands. The bear carried the little boy drummer back to his home before making their way up north in the direction God had led them with the elves atop their massive backs. When everyone had gone, Kringle grasped the reins attached to the reindeer, and slowly the sleigh followed the reindeer higher and higher into the snowy night. It was a wondrous feeling. Alas, the snow had started to fall so much that it made it impossible to see. They had to stop many times, thinking how to continue safely. Kringle looked to the heavens and asked the Lord for help. God reached down and allowed his own light, the most intense light in existence, to fill the head reindeer that was leading the team. The reindeer glowed so brilliantly with pure white light from its eyes, nose, and mouth that seeing clearly in the thickening snowstorm was easy as the sleigh flew on to safety. It was a magnificent night, a night that started the legend carried on to present day. Kringle was given a special first name of Chris from the Lord, who named him after the Christ child and what would become Christmas. His wife, Mrs. Claus, nicknamed him Santa, meaning saint for his pure heart, and Claus, which was his real first name. Through the years, he has been called by many names, and he has loved them all. But Santa, or Santa Claus, is what has seemed to stick with him most. And after Jesus was taken to heaven to be with God, his father, Kringle chose to wear a red suit to symbolize the precious blood that was shed by Jesus for all of mankind. The Lord had created a helper in the Magi Kringle, and together God and Kringle had created helpmates with the reindeer, rabbits, and bear. After Jesus and his family were taken safely to Egypt, Kringle and the others were led by the Lord up north to safety, and all have lived at the North Pole, covered by a powerful veil, protected away from eyes to see ever since. Kringle was later gifted a grand, magical kind of crystal snowball, which allowed him the ability to check in on children and people everywhere to see what their hearts held. Chris Kringle, the elves, the reindeer, and the bear have continued to make the birth of Jesus a very special night, a night that would soon be one when Chris would bring a little joy to all the good children of the world by way of flying reindeer and a grand sleigh filled no longer with our child king, but with presence of love just as was given on the night our Lord was born. Today in remembrance of that special night, we know it is Christmas and the Christmas season became the most wonderful time of the year. It is important never to forget the true meaning of Christmas and how it all began. Some might call it magic, but for others they recognize it was the power of God 
and the beginning of the one who was sent to give us the three greatest gifts one could ever receive, the gifts of love, sacrifice, and salvation. Remember this special day for what it truly is and keep it deep in your heart forever. Receiving gifts from Santa Claus is a wonderful thing, but our precious Savior Jesus and what he sacrificed for us was the most exceptional gift of all. Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night.